Hey folks, thanks for joining me again. Uh, looks like this is gonna be a weekly thing or so, so buckle up, it's time for another episode. All right, just a little bit of a preface to this week's episode. It may seem like I'm advertising myself quite a bit. But because of the nature of what I'm going to be talking about, I have examples from my own experience that I can use. And so it seemed to make the most sense as examples to use in this video. Today our episode is going to be about self-employment. So I just want to preface this again by saying that I am not an expert in this at all. I only recently started doing some self-employment work within the last year. I still have a part-time job as you probably heard in my last video or the last couple of videos. And when it really comes down to it, if it wasn't for having money coming in from different avenues, I probably wouldn't just be able to quit this job, go full-time into, into what I love. My self-employment work is doing video. And I've enjoyed doing video for years and years and years, but I never thought of it as a serious business for myself as a self-employed person at any place, but I just never found a job that I loved going to every day that I loved doing. And so partially I started taking on some extra work with social media at the restaurant that I work with, and that's closer to video than it is from restaurant work, but it's still not quite video. And so when I realized that I wasn't satisfied with anything else and video was, I guess, my passion, then that's something that I wanted to pursue. And it's really hard to find an existing company to place yourself into to doing video when you don't have a lot of experience. So I figured the best thing for me to do was to build my own experience, start my own business. Now this doesn't mean that I expect my business to last for 50 years necessarily, but hopefully at some point I'll either come to a position where I can go full time into this or it can be a good resume builder for applying to do some video stuff. I've been finding out that the video community is very tight-knit, uh, especially in Saskatchewan. There's a lot of photographers and a lot of those photographers do have some video elements to their packaging, whether it's for weddings or grads or portraits or whatever, for business people, for private events. Strictly video companies are starting to become more popular, but I still feel like there's quite a demand for them. So that really launches right into point number one, which is find your passion. Video was the thing that I was really excited about. And so I pursued video. Now for you, it might be art, it might be dance, it might be physical activity, it might be writing, it might be actual movies as opposed to these vlog style or highlight video type things. Whatever that is, find it. Once you've determined it, start pursuing it in whatever ways you can. Places like YouTube make it very easy for you to keep your creative expressions flowing. You can simply do something like this and force yourself to post once a week or post every couple of days. You can do a different video every single time. You can do the same video every single time. It doesn't really matter. But there are lots of really cheap, if not free ways to get your passion out there to the public you can and then from there you can build some kind of a portfolio and from there you can build your experience uh, and from there you build your knowledge of whatever it is that you're passionate about okay and so this is launching right into point number two it seems which is building the basics so that's a, in my mind that is a logo obviously a company or brand name of some kind and probably a website now if you're not a graphic expert, you might have a little bit of a tricky time doing the logo. You might have all kinds of ideas, but you're not sure what is too complicated, what's too simple, what's just gonna look right and fit your business. I would say to you, come up with a logo because that's, in, that's, that's important with starting to identify your brand and your name. So you need those two kind of at the same time, but people update their logos all the time. I'm not saying that you should change your logo every two weeks because people will probably get confused unless that's a regular thing you do. And then once you go to start printing business material like business cards or flyers or putting out ads or something like that, you won't have a consistent 
image to your brand. But if you've got a logo that you are, you know, 90% okay with, but not 100%, but it, but it was really cheap or really easy to get, I would say just go for it, take a, take a risk. If you're really not feeling it, by all means, hold out until you've got something perfected. But otherwise, you've got the name, you've got the logo, you can push ahead into building some kind of online platform or website. And when it comes to showcasing your work, that's why I use a website. Personally, my website showcases a little bit about myself and, and why I do what I do. It showcases some project examples from my past, the options that I have for what kind of work I can do. And it also has an option for people to contact me requesting work or requesting help with projects that they've got going on. Again, this is just for what I do. If you're doing a different kind of business other than video, it might look completely different. But that's why I chose a website. And if you don't know somebody personally that can do websites and that is either willing to do it for cheap or for free, there are a lot of basic online website editors. Start with something simple. You're gonna have to purchase domain names and things like that at some point, but just start with something simple. Start with something basic that you can do yourself. Make it look minimalistic, I guess is the best way to do it since that's an in kind of style now. That's really easy to go with uh, imagery and text and some basic colors and not worry about making it too ultra fancy at the moment. You can always switch a provider for your website in the future and keep the domain name and make it look 10 times better once you get some money that you can pour into it. Until you have those resources, you can't really afford to do a lot and neither could I. I actually reached out to some people for the website portion, for the logo portion. I kind of crowdsourced the brand name for myself. This was just all kind of to get other people's reactions to each thing, but as well as I needed help. I needed some direction and I didn't feel comfortable just coming up with it all off the top of my head, not telling anybody and then launching something. It took a little bit of research into what people around me were doing, how they were operating, kind of the terminology for the business, things like that. So it will take a little bit of work. I don't expect to sit down and have this all figured out overnight. If you really, really, really can't afford or can't figure out how to do a website, at least jump on Facebook and create a business page. That's free. You can put your own money into it if you want to boost posts, but at the very least, people have somewhere to click over to that isn't your personal profile. So you can still post whatever it is that you post and share and not have to really worry about it affecting your business. But if you create a business page, it creates this separate identity that the public can connect with you in, really allows for that uh, cheaper format in which to link off to other sites and other services once you have those built. And you can add those into the business pages later. I've, again, done that for myself. It was especially helpful when my website wasn't yet up and running and I just wanted to get my stuff out there and start building a, a little bit of a reputation for myself. If you're into things like art, photography, pretty much anything other than video, Instagram's a really good option for that too. It's a free service. It's owned by Facebook, so a lot of the interconnectivity between that and a Facebook page will work really well if you wanna do that. Again, don't link it to your personal page do a business page because like I said, that does keep it all separate and does keep it nice and clean. If for some reason you ever quit the business and scrap it all together, you can still keep that business page on Facebook. You don't have to pay for the domain names to websites and things like that, but you still have everything copied over or linked onto Facebook for future reference. All right, point number three, making it legal. Going through all the paperwork that you're gonna need to go through to make sure that your business is something permissible by wherever you live. For me in Saskatchewan, I didn't know anything really about how to start a business. I do have a few friends that have their own business and so they've been working for that for years. Even then, some of them have their own accountants that do work behind the scenes and I wasn't about to go and knock on all these doors and get free help. So I just simply used the internet, searched out what I needed to do. I looked for articles that were specific to Canada because guidelines are different in Canada and guidelines are different in Saskatchewan specifically. So make sure that you're looking at the right articles. But I searched out the articles on how to, okay, how do you start a business? What are the first steps? What kind of forms do I need? Once I've got those forms figured out, 
Do I need to pay GST? Do I need to pay PST? When do I need to pay them? How do I sign up to pay those appropriately? What happens come income tax time when I have to file for myself and my business? Those are all things that I just kind of went through one at a time. I took it, I took one idea, I started with business license and I searched it out and I worked on it. And through the progress, I learned about all of these different licenses. And usually there's a website that you can find out that'll give you a list of things. A couple websites that I definitely recommend are checking out the Government of Canada website, specifically in relation to the revenue agency portion of the site, because that'll give you a lot of good information on record keeping and how to file when you file taxes. And then check out your city or your town or your province's uh, vendor's license rules and regulations. Now, one thing I will say is I knew I was gonna have to put some money into the business before I made any money. My goal was to, of course, put in as little as possible just to get me up and running because I didn't want to go bankrupt starting a business that I had no idea if it would work or not. But I did have some money set aside. And so even with just a few hundred dollars, which does seem like a lot at the beginning when you're not making any money, but I was able to do a business license, a vendor's license, register my business name as a legitimate business, get GST, PST numbers, all this kind of stuff. And then I was up and running. So now, anytime somebody asks me for work, I don't have to start freaking out and panicking because, oh, the licensing hasn't still come in, oh, I haven't got this done, or I've forgotten to fill out those forms. If you do those all right off the bat, as you're building a website and everything like that, as soon as you start getting work offers, or project requests, then you're just able to go ahead and do what it is and not have to worry about any negative repercussions. And the final thing that's a part of that is also record keeping. Make sure that you definitely keep records. Again, there's a lot of cheap and easy and probably also some free ways to just manually enter all of your records for invoices, for bills, for receipts or maintenance for your home office or an office outside of your house. All these things can be found online. It does take a little bit of searching as I found. There isn't one specific website I can point you to that just lists them all out for you, which I think is kind of a shame, but there are other services that a lot of regions or provinces have, sometimes even a specific company that they recommend, which again, might cost you money. But if you're willing to sit down and do the time that it takes to research everything that you need and go through it just one at a time, I find it was really helpful for me to just compartmentalize each of the steps and, and get through each one one at a time before worrying about dealing with the other. Number four, I think that this is possibly one of the most important aspects of it. And in fact, you can actually even position this ahead of number one as 0.5 or zero or whatever step number you wanna make it because it works on both ends. Encouragement and support. Like I said, when I was starting out, I was getting people's help with logo, with website, with ideas for business names, but without having a couple of people around to just support me and encourage me through it, including some others who were in this field of video that I was trying to tackle. Or my wife, for example, supporting me, encouraging me to push on, encouraging me in my passion and to pursue it. Obviously, there's a different dynamic if you're in a family situation than opposed to you just being all on your own. You have others to think about. You have others to be responsible for. So when you can get those on board with the track that you're headed down, that just makes it all the more better. And it just gives you that extra freedom and that enjoyment to pursue the thing that you're passionate about. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, this didn't all happen overnight. This was a progress that I started about a year ago. And in fact, about a year before that, I was already starting into some video stuff. If you wanna check out some of the things that I and my wife and one of our friends were doing just on the side, coincidentally, it's called On The Side Productions and you can find the channel here on YouTube. And it was just one of those platforms where I was trying desperately to figure out is video something that I really want to do? Can we make it work? Now, obviously there's been changes to the YouTube partnership program since then. And what we thought might turn out to earn us a little bit of money on the side hasn't really gone that direction. This channel in fact is gonna be demonetized around the middle to end of February as changes to that program also affected the watch time count and subscriber count of this channel. So mostly things like this are an excuse to maybe hopefully work my way back up to that minimum threshold and achieve something. But at the same time, it also is just a weekly reminder of me 
having to sit down and do some work and figure out what I love about video. It gives me an opportunity to definitely be editing and working on something every week, which I think is really important to keep that passion alive. Because just like anything else that you love, there's gonna be times when you fall in and out of love with it. And so you just need that reminder that you love this, you wanna keep working on it, you wanna keep pursuing it, and here's why. If you're all wondering what I'm talking about in referring to my own video stuff, I'll have links to my own Vimeo and website below. It's rempelfilmscapes.com. You can go and check it out. You can share this video with other people, even though it's not directly linked to that account. Because the videos that I do on whatever platform I do them is just a way to remind and encourage myself to pursue it so that I can share what I love with others. If you have any specific questions about the process, I'm not gonna claim that I can answer every single one of them, but feel free to shoot them my way. I'll try to help you out as best as I can, or I might give you some tips on things that I forgot in the video itself that can help you progress, that can help you succeed. We'll talk to you next time.